She's a blue jean baby with her hat down low Chasing that wild wind wherever it blows Flying through the night just as fast as she can go Yeah, it's one right, two left Right like hell round a clover leaf pattern That you know so well Sitting just right with the reins in her hands Underneath the bright lights Chasing them pins She's one of those nobody knows Out making some noise Yeah, she's a dark horse My name is Joe Scott. I'm the president and CEO of ZoomBang. We are a polymer manufacturer. This is our facility where we manufacture the best polymer in the marketplace for impact protection and protection against all frequencies on the impact spectrum. Everything from vibration mitigation to high impacts. Right in this area over here, you'll see that we have a number of our different pad configurations. We'll keep an inventory of pads that we use for everything from our Sports, we are in every sport that you can think of. Uh, we sell to most of the NFL teams. Every NHL referee wears our gear. Uh, a lot of NHL uh, players are wearing our gear. Uh, and kids and athletes all around the world. What sets us apart is that we keep our polymer in a true polymer state. It's a viscoelastic polymer that's not cured. Many of the other companies in the industry that provide impact protection use foams or gels or rubber, our polymer provides a chemical reaction that occurs when impacts apply to it, and the molecular structure changes and it behaves as a solid. And then it immediately reverts back to its soft and conformable self. That's, that keeps for a very comfortable pad, but also makes sure that we have that energy dissipation by virtue of the heat exchange. Whereas a lot of our competition, in fact all of our competition, eliminates that in their padding because they don't have that chemical reaction occur the way that we do. That's why we have to encapsulate everything in urethane because it is a liquid in sense and it would ultimately flow out if we didn't have it encapsulated. When we apply energy to this, much like I showed you in the demonstration with the raw polymer, the molecules are gonna lock up, they're gonna behave as a solid, they're gonna provide us a great amount of protection and then it's gonna automatically revert to the soft and conformable self. This is why ZoomBang is the best protection in the marketplace. We partner with MCR Gloves, and we provide them with the padding that goes on the palm of their glove. This padding is used for vibration mitigation, for guys working with jackhammers or any type of vibration type tools. And this really adds a level of uh, energy that remains intact with them because they're not getting that constant shaking that will cause fatigue. We work with a number of uh, institutions and foundations that work with organ transplant recipients. And when somebody receives a new organ, they have to have that area protected. We've been the go-to provider for that protection for companies such as the Trip Foundation or Kidney Kids and a number of other institutions. We'll get shirts in from surgeons around the country and around the world for that matter, where they'll actually mark off the area where a kidney was placed because they'll place it in different areas when they have the opportunity wherever it'll fit. And we'll put protection in that area that they mark off, send it back out, and now this kid who just received a new kidney can actually get out there and enjoy life with a sense of comfort and, a, and the protection that he needs in order to be able to play sports and live the life of a normal kid. And that's, that's a real feel-good area for us. Come on. <laughs> Let me show you how to do it one time. <laughs> yes. That's, that's real. Well, my name is Michael Ray Garvin. I'm a former two-sport professional athlete, and I'm from Katy, Texas. Well, the first time I tried the Zoom Bang equipment, uh, it felt good. It was, it was uh, compressed t-shirts where I had the padding on my shoulders, um, also on my deltoids, too. 
I like contact, I'm an aggressive type person, so I wanna make sure that my body is protected when I'm out there hitting. The reason why I like Zoom Bank protective gear over like the Nike compression shorts or the Under Armour um, you know, gear, scientifically, Zoom Bang, um, their polymer actually absorbs energy up to 90%. When you look at the competitors, it's between 60 to 70%. So that's why I like the Zoom Bang gear better because I'm more of like a scientific type guy. I like, the, I, I like equipment that actually works better and actually has uh, results backing it up. Hello, my name is Connor Nichols. I'm 13 years old. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm in seventh grade, going on to the eighth. I play uh, baseball mostly and basketball and football. I found this piece of equipment, but it wasn't labeled like catcher's gear because I'm a catcher. So I tried it out and then I got in my stance and then whenever I got into the stance, it covered up my whole body, which was pretty surprising. Well, I used to wear a big, like, heavy chest plate, and um, that was, it, I mean, it protected me, but it wasn't more comfortable than when I used the Zoom Bang. And whenever I used the Zoom Bang, you, you can still feel the impact, but it's easier to pop up and throw. It doesn't get in your way. Um, the day I got hit by a pitch, it was a curveball, so usually on a curveball, it comes in. And on that, I wasn't, I, usually you're supposed to like turn your back, but on that pitch I couldn't read it that well because it was like a lefty and it was coming this way, not a righty coming this way. So when the ball came, I kind of stood and thank God I was wearing it at the time. It went and it hit my chest right here and it felt like nothing, I just ran. It's like nothing, like a little rock hit you, a little pebble. <laughs> So this is our double planetary mixer. This is where all the chemistry happens in the polymer. We make our base polymer in here. It's a, it's a two-step process. Uh, the base is where, again, all the chemistry happens, where all the uh, proprietary constituents are compiled together and ultimately produce a force chemical reaction that yields our base polymer. This process takes about three hours. Uh, as you can see, Around the room, you'll see everything's covered in terms of constituents. Uh, we use nicknames in-house for everything. It's a trade secret protected uh, formula. It's something that we take very seriously. So here's how a polymer comes out of the lab and ultimately what we use to get the manufacturing process to turn them into padding. Uh, this is the polymer in the raw form. It's what you've seen in terms of my doing the demonstration with the hammer. And now we want to do, what we want to do is we want to be able to put this polymer into the pad configurations that are going to protect the athletes, the policemen, the military, uh, the patients, and anybody else that uses our polymer for impact protection. Right now, what we do is, the first step is we'll put it into what's our vacuum extruder, and we call this our pugger. Basically, we put it in there, stuff it in tight, the vacuum comes on, it'll pull any air out of it, and then it'll produce sheets of our polymer with zero air, so it'll come out onto the conveyor. We, we set the thickness, we calibrate it. We have a calibrator over here. Every six feet, we'll make sure the guys recalibrate so we keep it at, for this application, which is the classic equine saddle pad that we're working on, we'll keep it at 220 mils. That's what it is. Freddie will then cut it off. This puts it on the die cutter so we can stamp out the configuration for that pad. It has filter paper on it. Once he pulls it out, the filter paper will adhere to the padding. And there you have it. These are the individual pads that will make up the saddle pad. Right now, Lan here is vacuuming the pad, so we have a, a urethane material that we heat up, and then we'll pull a vacuum on it, and that, so that solidifies the ceiling of the pad on the top. So we, ha we have it now encapsulated on the top. That's where we move on to the next phase in the process, which is the RF welding to finish the seal. When that's completed, you see we have a fully encapsulated pad. The only thing left to do now is to have the excess cut off. 
The one thing that we do that's unique in this part of the process for classic equine saddle pads is that we'll actually aerate the pad. So at, instead of having a full sheet of urethane with no air ability to move through, we have holes that'll be punched in so that there can be some airflow between the pad and, and while it's inside the saddle. This makes it a little bit uh, more comfortable for the horse and makes the saddle pad in general uh, a little bit uh, cooler. And this gives us what we're gonna end up sending up to Classic Equine as a finished pad so that they can put it into the Sewn Series saddle pad and be out there protecting horses. So here we are now in Granbury, Texas at Classic Equine. We're gonna see the manufacturing process of the Sewn Series saddle pad that uses the Zoom Bang insert that we watched earlier today. I'm here with professional barrel eraser Ryan Padone and also Cooper Flynn here at Classic Equine to see how the manufacturing process of the Zone Series saddle pad is completed. I really like to use the Zone pad. I use the suede top Zone pad just because it's a little bit thinner um, of the different forms of Zone pads and uh, super excited to meet the main man that puts together the pads and meet the main guy that um, creates the insert that goes in the pad and fully understand what's going in the pad that I'm putting on my horses to protect the backs and stuff. So really excited to be here. Well, thanks for coming up here, guys. Uh, excited to show you what we do here at Classic Equine. Uh, overall, if you break it down to sizes, colors, and styles, we make 84 different pads in here. You know, we use a lot of the same felts in each pad. Okay. So after we cut our pieces, our next steps, we gotta laminate them together and put the zoom bang in the inside. We come here to our lamination booth. We have, so we have our two pieces of felt. So we'll mark them up so that this thing goes exactly where it's supposed to every time so that they're all the same. And we'll laminate the other piece on top. That's the end of seeing the zoom bang. <laughs> all right, so we got them laminated together. We're gonna fast forward 24 hours. So these pads have been, been here overnight drying. We're gonna hand them in here. So this is a die cutter? Die cutter is a 35 ton hydraulic press. Okay, wow. So we could smash anything we wanted to, but now we use, this thing looks like overkill, mm -hmm. but we cut everything from these thin, these thin pads like this, all the way up to one inch, 100% wool pressed felts. I was gonna say, cause we use a die cutter at our facility, but we're only cutting urethane and it's definitely not at the uh, same magnitude as this. Right, and it's, you can hear it working there. It's pretty heavy duty. Without a doubt. So we've got our shape cut out. Mm -hmm. Next step we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the edges together. Just to add some extra security to yeah, it. Yeah, it, so it extends the life of the pad and it gives it a nice finished look. Okay. I'm uh, completely okay. blown away at how many steps and how precise y'all are with, and I'm like, really aware now why my pads stay together so well. Because I am terrible with equipment, very hard on equipment, and people that know me can totally vouch for that. And so, y'all do a great job. Ryan's the litmus test. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So we've got, we had our shapes, we got two shapes, our blanket top, got them all wear leather set up, ready to go. Now we just gotta put one together. So again, like we showed at the Zoom Bang factory, the way the polymer works is that it responds to energy proportionally equal to the amount of energy that's applied, applied to it. So if we just tap on it, we can kind of feel that. But if you really bear down on it, you don't really feel it at all. It doesn't feel any different than just a little tap. So I'm like so excited. I just saw him hit his own hand and it kind of put me in shock. So we're gonna test it out in this phone and uh, I get to do this. 
Right? I get to do? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nah. Yeah, it you didn't kidding break. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was exciting. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that just amazes me. I mean, that amazes me. And I kind of figured that it wasn't going to break because he did hit his own hand pretty hard, you know? And I, I was a little like, okay. So, um, but the cool thing is, uh, it's really cool to relate it to the horse's backs too. Because you see a lot of people, there's a lot of different levels of riders and people learning to ride or people's balance not quite in the center of a horse. And they're moving a, a lot on their backs. And this makes me feel a lot better for horses, you know, because I, I really could. And just thinking about um, the zone pads on rope horses and stuff and how they have to take that torque of like when they turn that steer and how, I mean, that's, it just gets me really excited for the, for my equine friend. You know, it, it works all across the impact frequency. So if everything from vibrations, it'll mitigate that to the deep impacts like you just saw here. So it's, it's just super cool because we do a lot of long trotting and that's just like steady, like we're constantly um, going up and down, up so and down. So repetitive motion, just yeah. bang, bang, bang over yeah, again. Yeah, so it, it protects those horses, that's super cool. to bring you out here to our environment with horses. Have you ever been around horses much? Not too much growing up in the city, but I can tell you that this environment's a lot better than the environment I'm used to. It's yeah. beautiful out here. Wonderful. And we came to uh, Brad Vance's house and his barn. Hi, and he's the vice president of sales at Classic Equal. Wow. Thanks for having us. Your place beauti is beautiful here. Thank you. I kind of prefer the suede top, just because it's a little bit not as thick. But I have a lot of uh, clients and customers that like because it's pretty. Mm-hmm. Yep. People do want to look good, and um, the wool top's cool. But the the body of the pad, just the felt top and the felt bottom with the zoom bang material in the middle, provides a lot of really neat features. Um, from a horseman's point of view, you're riding a lot of horses and. I don't get to ride near as much as I used to, but the thing I like about it is how conforming it is, and then um, really just how dead it is. When you get it on a horse's back, it really does not move. It's very conforming, it stays put. The shock absorbing capabilities of the Zoom Bang are really good in a lot of different disciplines because it disperses all that energy. And uh, once you get it up on a horse's back, then you're ready to saddle. So when you say the saddle pad feels dead, does that mean it's structurally, it's the sound that's sitting there and not moving around, is that important? Um, yeah, as far as that term, I don't know how else to describe that feature, but the, com the conforming piece of it molds to a horse's back. Um, it requires little break-in, but um, it stays where it, it's put. And then when you get your saddle on it, there's not a lot of balance, there's not a lot of move. Um, it just stays put. I'm originally from South Dakota. I was born and raised up there, grew up on a ranch, uh, competed in team roping, calf roping, cutting through high school, through college. Came down here, went to college in Tarleton, uh, got acquainted with Classic Equine in about 1996, about a year after they started. Uh, went to work there and helped them with saddle pads and boots. Um, I've always loved horses, enjoyed spending time in the barn, and uh, it's really cool to be able to help with product that makes a different in, difference in horse owners' lives. Um, the cool part about our job is we get to wear boots and jeans and we get to spend time in the alleyway with horse people. So, so one of the things that we do is we'll come up with a product idea, we'll reach out to people that get to ride every day, lots of horses, like you, Ryan, and you were one of the people that we took our prototypes to and had tests. So tell us a little bit about your first experience with the zone. 
Well, uh, Jay called me and I, she said that they had a new product and I was pretty um, excited because she said it was going to help with like the impact and everything. So I took it home and uh, put it on, I'm trying to think what horse it actually was. Um, I think it was uh, Kiss Me Bill Compton. And I think that I put it on them and um, it, I like the way it fit underneath the saddle. And even though it has that, I, it was the suede top. And even though it had the, like the, design insert in it it's still I like a thinner pad and it was still thin and um, it sat really well on them and uh, and it seemed to be very very durable and it lasted quite a while so yeah. and I'm very very hard on stuff so so that's part of the reason we'll reach out to folks like you that are riding how many horses a day uh, 15 to 25 yeah. so we can get a real tight uh, feedback because if you're riding 10 to 15 a day you might ride it for six weeks, and that'd be mo like most people riding it three months, six months a year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at Class Equine, we've been doing this about 21 years now, and we we're always trying to figure out a little bit better way to provide a product that's going to make a difference for a horse person. And we certainly like companies like Class Equine that want to continue to improve, to use the technologies that are available today, and they challenge us back to help us perform better.